He, he talked said, about your life being scripted. This yeah, does sound yeah, yeah. very scripted. So at the he, said, he said, "Come down to the shop, and um, we'll look after look at what cameras." It's going to be a good one. <laughs> so how 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 did David Cannon, the world-renowned number one golf photographer, how did that begin? Where where did this all come from? Uh, well, yeah, okay, back to my study. Yeah, at school. Yeah, sports pictures all over the wall. Yeah. Tony Jacklin. Tony Jacklin, Leicester City um, football yeah, team. Yeah, Who's yeah. the players back then? Well, we had, we had Mike Stringfellow and uh, Lenny Glover, I David. Don't, I, don't know. I like how you asked that, Rick. So there's no way that you're going to know Leicester players in the 1960s. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, the only one I know is probably Gary Lineker. <laughs> Jamie oh, Peter, Vardy. Peter Shilton. You'd know Peter, yeah, Peter Shilton. Shilton. Yeah. 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 yeah, we had a decent team. Yeah. Yeah, Keith Weller. There was a load of them. <clears throat> so then you would, you, and, and you had these posters up and you. You admired the photography. You liked yeah, the pictures. Yeah, I like pictures. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Had an interest in cameras yourself? Not, not really. I had a godmother who'd given me a Kodak Instamatic in a box set, which I was very proud of. Really? Yeah. And um, I'm yeah, guessing I'm, that's pretty big. No, tiny. Oh, All right. Mean, a Kodak Instamatic is like your. Oh, it's like a like a wind up. Yeah. It, like a wind up you know those camera do you remember the cassettes of film you used to get mm. yeah, you yeah. probably don't remember them. them I do remember them yeah. roughly I think I've still got that camera somewhere oh my goodness home. yeah and uh, I remember on family holiday lying beside we went northwest of Scotland for the second week after we'd done Nairn and um, they had a salmon river yeah. up in the Loch Inver and it's a beautiful walk up this thing and at certain times of the year the salmon oh, leap swimming upstream yeah and a leaping and I remember lying while we were having a picnic I'm lying there with this camera up to my eye, waiting to try and catch a salmon in leap. Wow. Did yeah. you do it? I got one, but it's a big blur because, it's, you know, <laughs> Kodak movement. Instamatic, the quality of it, it, it yeah. wasn't going to, but it's right up out of the water. Wow. So I suppose that's one sort of sign of things to come. Yeah. But then again, my father, you've got to put it down to that. So he introduced, he, he was in advertising in Leicester and um, Leicester Publicity Club was a big thing of his. And um, I went to, a dinner with him with my mum and uh, he introduced me to a guy called Neville Chadwick and Neville um, became my sort of godfather yeah. of photography basically wow and uh, he um, I got chatting to him and I, he said I'd, we do all the Leicester City and Leicester Tigers brilliant so you were photography like... and uh, you know it's sort of like litter touch paper yeah and um I remember he was saying to him, he said to me, well, if you want to come down for a game, you know, you can sit with my cameras. In those days, it was like that. You, you know, people had, were able to take a friend to sit yeah. beside them. Yeah, where well, now you'd need health and safety, oh, you'd you need the right do access. It. You couldn't do it, you know. unless <laughs> you, you got a pass. Well, yeah, photo messenger is the only way you do that nowadays. Yeah. And then they've got to run the disc back to the people who are editing for you. But, um, yeah, so he said, and I remember I had... A, because of my company car, I had my own little mini that I sort of Is that sat, what it was? Uh, sat on the drive at Brilliant. home, yeah, just gathering dust. Full of 10 peas inside it. <laughs> no, this is the mini. No, I, was the, after? the company car was a Ford Cortina or whatever we got given yeah. in those days. I went through um, Ford Cortina, Granadas, uh, all those sort of swanky yeah. cars. Yeah. <laughs> and um, But your run around was a little mini. My, yeah, that's what I had when I'd been playing golf. And, uh, and but you're a big guy. Yeah, it's well, all knees either side of the <laughs> steering wheel. <laughs> but this little thing got me all around the country. Wow. Yeah, W R Y two eight two J. I can, you still, can still, re- remember still remember the license plate. plate. That's yeah. class. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> and um, anyway, I decided to sell her. Right to buy a camera. To buy a camera. So uh, you know, this is and um, I did that, and I went to, went to Jessup's in Leicester. I was lucky because uh, Jessup's of Leicester, major, huge camera store. Yeah. We're still around now, aren't yeah, the Jessops? And, and Alan Jessop was a member of the Leicester Golf Club. No way. Yeah, he said, come down. The guy who owns Jessops. Yeah, That's ridiculous. was a member at the time. And he he said, talked about your life being scripted. This yeah, does sound yeah, yeah. very scripted so at the he moment. So he said, come down to the shop and um, we'll look after you. Look at what cameras you might choose. Being Canon, of course, surname. Of course. Yeah. Drawn Spelled slightly differently. The, yeah. Is it just one N? One N, yeah. Is the, mate, is the yeah. camera. And there was a Canon AE1 was just come out, which was basically the start of major semi-electronic cameras from being totally um you wouldn't call them manual but they didn't basically cameras didn't have batteries up to that stage other than the winders wow so um this was the first electronic built-in meter and what year was this 78 okay 
So um, I bought one of these AE ones and a small telephoto lens as well to go with it. That must have been expensive. It was very expensive. Like the price of a Mini? Yes, price of a Mini, basically. <laughs> Best thing I ever did in my life. <laughs> you didn't have, Were you still working at the nylon place? Yeah. So you still had the company still, car? I was still selling my nylon sheets. And instead of going to play golf now, I you used did. to do... Because uh, I'll accelerate a little bit. Because anyway, I started. Neville said, "Come down." First thing I went to, to with him was um, East Midlands were playing the All Blacks. Okay. The All Blacks were touring, and I, I still don't remember whether it was seventy-seven or seventy-eight, but one of those winters, and um, at Welford Road. So, like a me, East Midlands was a was a. It was, it was the touring get, touring matches. You know, when the touring side came over, they'd play the internationals at weekends and the second team would play clubs or regional Is it kind of like a training exercise as much as anything and no, just I think it no it was part of the tour you right. know it, it was the way they, they it's like a Lions tour right you know the Lions tour they have the test matches and then yeah. they either play the provinces I get yeah for I'm not massive in midweek rugby, but yeah, yeah but they play midweek they play the provinces for the speak guys who aren't getting the matches with the first team okay mm. so this was kind of what it was it was the the all, all Blacks B team, <laughs> still pretty big. Yeah. Because uh, I remember I sat in the corner and Neville said to me, he said, right, Dave, you sit in the corner, look after my cameras. And I got my camera. Said, you, he said, yeah, here, here's a couple of rolls of film. And he said, he said, um, two things, fill the frame and focus on the eyes. And that was it. That was it. Yeah. The I, rest is history. Well, I sat there and, you know, there was one moment in the game where uh, uh, Les Cusworth was the scrum half for the East Midlands team and he's trying to hook a ball out of the scrum and this massive all blacks sort of like oh about God. to flatten him and I went click and I thought well, that might be quite a nice picture and when we go back because it, it also in those days you know um, it was very much NUJ controlled what does that mean? National Union of Journalists if you weren't a member of the National Union of Journalists you could not get pictures published ah. from live events in, okay. in, ah. in newspapers so, so that's why the the, the the press, the photographers almost looked, looked after themselves to a degree. Well, sort of, yeah, but it was just it's the way that the business had gone and um, they looked after the photographers effectively. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, because it was ma- made sure that people got paid properly for pictures. Of course. And um, used to have an NUJ um, approved wire man. So, right. in order to send a picture to a newspaper, it had to go through this wire man. You couldn't do it as a photographer. You had to go use a wire man to do it. And what does the wire man do? He, he puts the print on a drum. Right. Because it was, you had to make a print first, and then you had to put a print on a drum, and then this, it would take seven minutes for a black and white or 21 minutes for a colour, three separations for the colour, where the picture spins around very fast, and there's a little scanner that runs right across the picture, and then that's transmitted down a phone line to the no. newspaper. Yeah, and then it's produce the other end they have to develop it out the other end same qu- how much quality was lost oh quite a bit a lot yeah yeah it was a real mission to transmit I, I can't believe those. how in such a quite in a short space of time really how it's changed to what it is today it's bonkers I mean I've been right through the change it's been amazing when you look at it but has it when you, you obviously you look back now to 78 and that's what happened but yeah. in that time frame has, has it felt like massive leaps and bounds or has it just been slowly but surely just better yeah, and better two things, and better th- yeah slowly but surely it got better you know um, once I got really serious about doing photography and Neville had introduced me to a guy called Bob Thomas who had a sport a football agency in 1981 okay and I still been selling my nylon sheets and doing all sorts of jobs for Neville for wow. nothing because just because I loved doing it you know and he'd loved having me around <laughs> because not many people wanted to do night football you know he had a studio photographer there he yeah. hated having to go to night games to do live events yeah and I you know on, with my company car I'd sort of wangle it if Leicester City were playing away at Rotherham or somewhere <laughs> like that that I time it that I could do the match in the evening for him perfect yeah so it was fantastic and I was still doing well selling sheets you know that was funding your what what and, and was photography your hobby at this point? Would you say, or was you, were you actually? It had already to make... become a bit. I hadn't make any money. No, okay, it's purely a hobby. Yeah. in that term, and you know, on Sundays instead of playing golf, I'd go to Mallory Park because you know they had they used to have the bikes there. And I remember Barry Sheen used to come twice, three times a year. He'd right. race at Mallory Park, all the all the top motorbike. And I loved motorbike. Did you really? I thought it was amazing because you know the angles they get, and it was such a cool thing to do and, and again access in those days was bonkers was it? you could 
get into spots you would never dream of nowadays. <laughs> because again, because of health and safety or yeah, things yeah, like that, totally. certainly with motorbikes. Yeah, and um, you had to be sensible. You don't go on the outside of anything because yeah. that's dangerous. But if you can get on the inside, and some of the inside, but you can really get them looking right at you. While the bi- bike bike's tilted. 45, oh, 45 and more degrees. Oh my God, knees, yeah. knees on the tarmac. Yeah. yeah, and what cool guys they were. Wow. I mean, you know, I remember bringing a print because I got a really nice one of Barry, and I thought oh, I'll take a print down to him. I gave it to him, and he took me into his caravan. A cup of tea, you know. <laughs> well, like you're giving him something. You're giving yeah. him value. Yeah. Like you are taking it because everybody loves an amazing picture of themselves. Yeah. Like whether it's doing something, whether it's capturing a moment, yeah. whether it's just capturing even wedding pictures and things like that. Yeah. Like uh, I feel like a photographer holds so much value to to the to the person who's who having the picture taken of yeah. you know. So obviously you were going into these these motorbikers and going, look at this amazing picture we've got yeah, for you. Yeah. They were going, come on, David, come and come have a look Absolutely. at the bike and come. Can you imagine th- trying to do that nowadays? You know, you wouldn't get past the garage. You won't get past the wall outside no, the garage, not basically. So it's, it's changed massively. Yeah, yeah. I was very lucky that that period was, and, and colour photography was still difficult in those days. Was it really? Yeah, because your slide film, it, it was so critical for exposure. And, you know, you had to have your camera settings spot on. Manual focus is another thing. There was no autofocus in oh those days. Oh, my goodness. And those, those big lenses that we use, you know, at, at the range, certainly something like the Seve picture, um, 30 meters away from him. Wow. You've got about this much depth of focus on those long lenses. Wow. If you're not in that thing, it's out of focus and it's not no And then good. from taking a picture, whereas now with obviously mobile phones and actual cameras with the screens, you can see instantly really if it's yeah. a good picture. How, from taking a picture, how long would it be before you know if it's actually any good or not? Well, but, you know, that, um, that black and white I got Les Cusworth the, the 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 back end of that story is was that the New Zealand the rugby game yes. yeah so Neville c- took took my two rolls of film he'd got because he used to get five rolls on a tank that he used to process he had to wind them in the dark onto a pro onto a reel process them and then get them out dry them and uh, that's what you see like the almost like in old school school all, movies yeah, when you used the, to hang yeah, them on a on a clothesline yeah yeah exactly that it was literally that wow and, and you had a red light because for some reason red light and again i'm not very technical i'm you know i'm not i'm a self-taught photographer wow so um done by trial and error right but uh, here he comes out he's got two spare real space for two more reels on his tank so he's, give me a roll so i can roll on half and he comes out and he's whistling away that's quite a nice picture and he phones me up the next morning and he says uh, go and buy the sunday express and there it was it's under Neville's name because it, uh, you had to because NUJ of the N- N- NUJ did N-U-J, you say yeah yeah and um, but yeah it was in, in the Sunday oh Express my God. How did that imagine me feel? going around the golf club so yeah, was that, that a bittersweet then if no you, no god I was just, just thrilled to get it used you how, know? Did it, how did it make you feel just Fancy. over the moon oh yeah my mum was absolutely wetting herself <laughs> literally really? yeah. and is, uh, was that the start was that the moment you thought yeah this could be something I really move into oh, from that moment on it was really <coughs> yeah that was it so you've gone rugby football loads of Leicester City Gary Lineker as a youngster you there know those go. sort of things yeah you've gone into um, motorbike yeah, a little a motorbike was all hobby. It's a bit of a hobby. It's all hobby. But then I got this job with Bob Thomas, which okay. was he's a major football photographer at that stage, and that was the learning curve. That was eighteen months. I learned ninety percent of what I still know nowadays in wow. that eighteen months. And that was shooting football. Football. Within three months of joining Bob, I was doing my first World Cup qualifying game in Belgium. Wow. And that year, I went to Central America. Honduras, El Salvador, doing and World Cup qualifying games, South America, uh, you know, literally. And then you travelled much before this? Not really. <laughs> you just out on your Imagine own? Imagine what it's like, you know. And I got sent to the practice round of the Masters as well. Did you run yeah. In that, in oh that trip? Word. Yeah. So what, what was well, the first year? Not on that year? trip, not on, but on, a, on another trip. <clears throat> so I mean, what was the first year you went to the Masters? Uh, I went to practice rounds in 1982. Okay. Yeah, and then I went again in 1983. By that stage, I'd moved to all sport at that stage. Um, when you said all sports, you were shooting at anything, anything well, sports? Well, all sport was another, was, all sport was a um, high end run by two guys, Tony Duffy and Steve Powell. They were, if you, you know, I always loved looking at pictures. Yeah. And I'd worship these two guys because I'd seen their sports pictures in every sports magazine, Sunday supplements, every, all colour. That what we do was shoot, shoot was colour. Yeah. Whereas, um, 
and then because color slide film would take an hour over an hour to process was very critical process you couldn't do it in tanks so it was very very critical processing 